Hi, welcome to Blender Dome. My name is Jim Craig. I'm with Planet of Mystery Productions, and we're going to show you today how I did this uh, sequence that, you're, that you just saw using Blender. Uh, it's actually pretty easy. Now, you will want to use uh, Blender 2.8 or higher. It probably could be done with other versions as long as you have dynamic paint, but if you don't have 2.8, you're not going to be able to render this in Eevee which is how I'm rendering it. It can be rendered in cycles, but you have to do some things at the end to bring up some of uh, the special effects that I use, like the glow around the sun and the glow around the impact sites. So let's get to it. Um, first, I want to send out a very special thanks to uh, Blender guru, Andrew Price, who showed the technique that I'm going to use for creating the planet, because usually when you make a planet, you take a sphere, let's get rid of the uh, default cube, usually take a sphere, smooth it, you know, add an image texture, and you make the planet that way. This time, instead of doing that, let's get rid of that sphere. We're going to take an image map, a texture map, and we're going to map it and make a sphere from that. Now, if you don't already have it enabled, uh, make sure that you um, enable import images as planes up under edit under preferences type Im oh there we go and you can see right there import export import images as planes so i've already got that enabled now in order to get that plane you just hit shift a go to image images as planes i have um, all of my planet textures in a folder called planet maps i'm going to use this eight um, 8K Mercury file. Now you'll notice it's kind of sitting on its edge along the y-axis. Don't change that, not yet. However, I do want to see what I'm doing, so I'm going to turn on my texture mode there. So we're going to go into the edit mode by pressing tab. Oh, I forgot to turn on my screencast keys. There we go. So we're in edit mode by pressing tab. Hit R, Y, 90 to lay it flat on the X, Y plane. And the, with its long axis going along the, uh, with its long axis going along the Y axis. Now we're going to add a central loop cut because that will make all of our uh, quads nice and even. So hit Control R right across there. Now we're going to go into our modifiers tab. And the first modifier we're going to select is subdivision surface and we're going to crank uh, the viewport and render levels up all the way but we want that selected as simple now we're going to add uh, two of the same modifier slightly different uh, parameters in each we're going to go to simple deform we don't want twist we want bend and we're going to want it to bend along the x-axis we're going to set that to 180 degrees. Now we're going to add another simple deform modifier just below that. We're going to change that one to bend. We want this along the z-axis. We're going to take that to 360 and it looks like a sphere. Although if you move around things look a little bit strange. Like right along there. It's because for some reason we're seeing back faces in this. So go into your materials tab scroll down and turn off show back face so we're going to tab out of edit mode and now we're going to go back to our modifiers tab and we're just going to apply each of these starting at the top and going one by one so subdivision surface applied first simple deform applied second simple deform applied now we're going to go into our front view by pressing 1 on our number pad. And you'll notice that there's your world, there's your origin for your object. If you were to do a rotate here, planets don't rotate like that. We want that at the center of our geometry. So we're going to hit, first we're going to hit shade smooth because it's not smooth. But we're going to come down here to set origin, to center of mass, surface. And now if we rotate our world, it's going to rotate more like we anticipate it should. We're going to 
hit Alt G, which will put it at the center of our world origin. Now we're going to do some things because right now this is still actually a bent plane and we want it to behave more like a sphere. So we're going to tab into it again, hit A, and while I'm thinking about it, I want it going, instead of the north and south poles being on their sides, I want it up and down. So I'm going to hit R, Y, minus 90. So now it's pointing straight up and down. And we're going to go into the mesh menu, come down to merge, and go by distance. And you'll see here at the bottom it says remove 319 vertices. What it did is it joined some of the vertices that were on those two edges that we brought together. And now it's one solid object. So tab out of it. And that's part one done. Um, our next part, part two, we're going to create a meteor shower. So for that, we need an object that will emit our meteors, and then we need to make an object to be our meteors. Now, we actually will not render the meteors themselves. These are used for making uh, paint maps, dynamic paint maps, that we will use later when texturing our world. Our world is not done by any stretch of the imagination. So I hit Shift A, and we're going to make our emitter out of an icosphere. Now, that icosphere hasn't got a lot of geometry. So what we're going to do is we're going to crank that geometry up a little bit more, say to five. And the reason behind that is each one of these little faces you see here will emit particles. Well, if you only have a little bit of geometry, it's going to the particles are going to emit from the center of that, which means that if you get you know, five meteors coming from the same direction all the time, it's going to get repetitive and it's going to be obvious. Now, I don't want to be able to see my object here. I want to be able to see the world inside. So I'm going to come over here into the Transform tab under uh, Viewport Display. I'm going to display it as Wire. Now we need to give it a particle system, and that's just as easy as coming over here to our particle systems, adding a particle system. And we want that particle system to actually not be too busy. So we're going to make that 125. We're also, before we go any further, we want this to be 930 frames long. It's because we're going to take off the first 30 frames, and at 30 frames per second, that will give us a 30 second animation. I'm also going to render it smaller simply because it's faster uh, when I show you the rendering. So we've got our particle system set. Let's go back down to particles. And if you hit play, now yeah, you've got particles emitting, but they're all falling down. We don't want that. So we have to come down to field weights and turn gravity to zero. So now they won't fall down, but they're all going the wrong direction. It's because they're being generated from what Blender considers to be the outside face. So we're going to take this face, we're going to turn it inside out. So let's hit tab again, all of our vertices are selected. Come up under mesh, under normals, and flip. And we hit tab. Now watch as all of our meteors hit our world, which also is passing through, which means that everyone that passes through is going to make an impact site going in and coming out. We don't want that. So we need to come here under our Physics tab, under Collision, and click Kill Particles on our world. Let's also go back here and make sure that our uh, particles emit, because I've only got them emitting for 200. This is 930 frame animation, so let's make it render for, or go for 930 frames. And now you can see and that's a fair, a fair amount of particles. Now the problem is, let's come down here under Render, turn off Show Emitter. We've got a bunch of particles there, but if you hit Render, nothing shows. And that's because these are called halos, which are sort of virtual representations of the particles rather than an object to act as a particle. So we need to have something, we need to have an object that can act as a particle. 
So we're going to add another icosphere. So hit Shift A, icosphere. Well, we don't need as much geometry in it. So we're going to take the subdivisions all the way down to one. And then we're going to move that out of the way. Just hit G and then just move it somewhere. We're also going to scale it down. We're going to scale it very small. Hit scale 0 0.003. And that's going to be our meteor that bombards our, our world. So now let's select our icosphere. Come under render instead of halo. Hit object. And we can do our second icosphere. By the way, if you want to change the name of it, you can always just double click on an object and change its name. But now, if we render, oh, they're not going to be very big, but you... I'm going to scale this up to three, just so you can see them for now. There, there you can see, see the particles as they're coming in. We don't want them that big, but what I did is I set this very small for creating the, uh, for creating the dynamic paint map. I turned that to 0 0.0025. It'll say 0 0.002, but if you click, you can see it's 0 0.0025. So now we have our meteors. So that's part two done. Now we need to create our dynamic paint maps and that's part three. So we're going to start by clicking on our globe here, our world, go under our physics tab, click on dynamic paint. Now if we want it to be a canvas, we want to add the canvas. For format, we don't want vertex, we want an image sequence. We want it to be all 930 frames. We're going to put in sub-steps of five because sometimes when a particle hits, on one frame it will be on one side of the surface and on the next frame it would be on the other side of the surface and it won't render an object there. If you do the sub-steps, it divides each frame into five parts and you stand a better chance of it actually colliding. Now, what I have discovered is in order to do these the way I want them to, I want to hit dissolve and set that to 150. Under dry, set that to 150. Under initial color, I actually happen to like color, so I'm going to hit color and black. Okay, we can leave all of those alone. Under output, we don't want paint maps, we want wet maps. And I actually have one that I set up here earlier called Impacts. We're going to accept that. But just have a directory that you can put that in, and a directory that's easy to find. Under UV Map, click UV Map, because you will need that. Now it says Bake Image Sequence, and if we bake an image sequence, what we're going to wind up with is black, uh, just black images. There's not, not going to be anything on them, because we need a paintbrush. That's what our particle system is for. So we're going to come under here and go dynamic paint. We want it to be a brush. Add the brush. I want the paint color to be white. I use RGB. So all the way up to white. Under source, particle system. And then which particle system? The particle settings we had. Okay, I set the particles radius to be the size of the impact. And then I take the smooth radius down, rather than 0, uh, 0 0.05, I take it to 0 0.025. Now, watching this as it bakes is about as interesting as watching paint dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the bake image sequence, and I'm going to pause the video for a moment, and we will be back, and we will take a look at the end result, and then move on to part four. I did leave out a couple small things. First of all, canvas size. This resolution 256 is very small, which means if it renders, it's going to be very blocky. So I've generally set it at uh, 1024 or higher. I like to do multiples of two or powers of two. So 1024, 2048, 4096, and so on. Although 4096 is overkill for this. Also, I forgot to show you, click on bake image sequence. Now we'll be right back.
Well, we're back. Uh, it took about three minutes to render, although there's uh, been a bit more of a delay. We had a thunderstorm roll in just as I was finishing up those frames, so if things sound a little bit different now, I do apologize. But what we need to do now is we need to bring those frames in and use them as image maps with our materials so we can make the meteor impacts on our world. So we're going to do a, a vertical split here. We're going to split this window. And also we're going to get rid of a couple things, or not really get rid of them, but hide them. Um, for the rest of this rendering, we're not going to use the icosphere or our little icosphere. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new collection. And we're going to call this Impactors. I'm going to grab the icosphere, shift click on the other icosphere. We're just going to move them down there. And then we're going to turn those off. We're not going to see those anymore. So now what we need to do is click on our world. Now we're going to bring it into a render view. And for the time being, we're going to make our background black in the world view. We're also going to turn our light into a sunlight. sunlight. So come down to the light settings, hit sun. We do not need it at strength of a thousand. About four should do. Um, <clears throat> no, move it to the origin and take out the rotation or nullify the rotation. Oh, forgot to turn my screencast keys back on. All right. And we're going to rotate this along the Y or along the X axis by 90 degrees. So let's grab that R X 90. And we can see here where our camera is. I'm just gonna move our camera in a little bit. So, uh, select the camera, come over to the camera perspective view, and hit G, Z, Z. That'll move it along its Z axis, Z axis, for those of you who aren't in North America or aren't in the United States. But this is what our world is going to render as. So, like that. Not remotely what we want. So, let's come over to our other uh, window over here. Come up under settings we want to use the shader editor and there it is and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to disconnect alpha because nothing there is transparent and we're going to make a duplicate of this and this is one we're actually going to use as the base texture for our world with the other one we're going to hit Control t this assumes you have the uh, node wrangler enabled again if you don't come on, come under your edit tab Preferences, enable the Node Wrangler. And instead of actually having this Mercury map here, let's pop the roughness up. We don't need a shiny world. Then on our Mercury tab where it says 8 Mercury, we're going to instead go into our impacts where we made all of those. And hit A, an open image, so we now have a 930 frame sequence. I'm going to scroll out there and let's move along. Up, and there you see a spot. Let's just let's just hit play. Just let it play. You see the spots appearing. And that's an impact and then they eventually fade out. It may take a little bit to fade. And that's all well and good except they're kind of bland, so we need to add some color. So we're going to go Shift A, go under Converter, and add a color ramp. And let's find where there's a really good one we can see. Let's go to right where it starts. Okay, and we're going to add a flag by hitting. Plus, we're going to change the color of that flag to red. And now you can see our spot is white in the middle, red on the outside. Put that red a little bit farther out to the edge. Then we're going to add another flag. Oops, on the wrong side there. We can just move that over. And we're going to make it an orange. So let's take that all the way up there. Green part way up. 
I'm going to click over here. I'm going to add one more flag, and we're going to add just a pure spectrum, pure yellow. And now we need to just you can just adjust these until you get it looking the way you want it to look. I want a white spot in the middle with a sort of yellow rim, and I want that white to be really apparent. Now the problem is, let's just go back to our camera view here, the problem is that that's not lit up. We want that to be brighter than the stuff around it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that color straight from as it's made and we're going to go to emission strength and then we're going to do the color into the emission. So now that spot's pretty bright. <clears throat> But we're not done yet. One thing we can do with the color is we can actually mix in our original surface of our planet by using a mix RGB, so shift A, color, mix RGB. We're going to plug the color from our impacts in the bottom the color from our world in the top, and then we're going to take that color from the images and take that and make that the factor. Then let's plug that into the base color. So now you can see the impacts take place on the planet. Now the planet's kind of bright and we can change all sorts of things. I bring in a color ramp here, so shift A, converter, color ramp, Oh, you can hear the cat in the background. Hopefully she'll behave for a while. And I'm going to bring that down and make it uh, sort of a, a brown color. And I like that color there. So that gives us the basis of our meteor impacts. We can just play on through. And if you want more meteor impacts, you again, you can add more particles in your system when you set up the particle system. But you can also see that it lights up here on the shadow side, on the dark side of it. And now I want to give this planet a crackle texture. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to get rid of that info tab. I'm going to hit Shift A, put Input Texture Coordinates. Now I want a, oh, I actually want a mapping node too. So I'm just gonna hit Shift D and just bring that one down. And from there we're gonna go to generated into vector, the top vector. Oh, I suppose I can stop that. Now we're going to bring in a texture. We're going to bring in a Voronoi texture. And we're going to make it the distance to edge. Pop that into vector. And just to preview it, because we have the node wrangler, I'm going to click on it and hit shift or control shift. Um, control shift and click on it. And that's sort of a texture. You know, I realize those lines are nice and straight. We don't want that. But they're also backwards. We want the lines to be light colored and we want the what's gray area here to be dark. So again, we're going to hit another converter color ramp, which we will use. Now we're going to flip those around. And again, it's nice, but those lines are just too straight. I also like to take the scale to six so we get just a few more lines. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add another texture. Hit shift, shift A. Another texture, we're going to add a noise texture. And we're going to set its detail up to 16. And we're going to mix that with the mapping 
So shift A, color, mix RGB. We hit color down there. And there we go, nice crackled world. You can, uh, I generally tend to pull the scale down a little bit. Now that's okay in one way, but here we're gonna do one other thing here. We're gonna duplicate this and hit, hit shift control D because we're gonna use one for lighting and one for color. We're gonna make this one color for now. now click on that, we're gonna hit plus, and we're going to bring in a deep red. I mean, a deep dark red. And then on our first one, we're gonna make that a dark orange color. The problem is, if we now take that and we can put that in our emission and put that on our emission strength oops and then what have we got here we've got a oh there we go we had it locked up So now what we need to do is we need to mix this color with this color. So we're going to hit shift A. Um, okay, mix RGB. That color there. Let's get rid of that viewer. Take that to emission. Then we're going to take and shift A, another color mix, mix RGB. That's going to go in the bottom here. This is going to go in the top. But we want those craters to light up more than the stuff around them. So we're going to go shift A, converter, math, and we're going to put a math node in there. We're going to multiply. We're going to multiply it by a fairly big number. Let's try three. Uh, still not quite bright enough. How was it that? How did I get that working earlier? Okay, I realize what I did differently. Let me bring my texture map back up again, or textured view. You know what I did differently? Instead of mix, I did add on both of these. Add and there we go. Let me see if I can find where. Yeah, okay. There's a put. Here's a place where they overlay. So that add that makes the difference. There is one more thing we can do to sort of bring this out and make it kind of pop a little bit, and that is to add. A bump map to it because that surface is you know it's a rough surface but and but it looks like it's just painted on smooth so what we can do is we can click down here and hit shift a and go down to vector and hit bump and then we can take the color from our image map that we use the mercury image map bring that down here and plug it into height and move all this over so we got a little bit of room to play. We're going to plug that into normal. Ooh, and that's a little too much. We're going to take that strength down to about 0.1, maybe a 0.2. And there we go. Our world is textured. Do a quick render on that. And we're going to Join these areas so we can just see and take
takes about 30 seconds or 30 frames for it to start for them to start hitting. And you can see there are our impacts. So our world is being bombarded by meteors. At least to some extent. We could like I said, we could have ramped those numbers up a bit more and had more meteors. Now for the background, I just took and did a really simple I'm going to split that again. And this time we're going to go in in the shader editor and we're going to hit instead of object, we hit world. And under background, we are going to tell it that we want it to be an environment texture. Now open, go into my planet maps, and way down here in my planet maps, I have a star map. Okay, so. And you can see stars. We're going to pop that up to three. So now you've got it with a starry background. Now, as you saw earlier, I didn't just have a starry background. I had a second background in there. And what that was was a noise, uh, noise texture with another color ramp. Hit Shift A, uh, texture, noise texture. We're going to plug that into the color instead. And oh, our world just got ugly. So hit Shift A. Converter, color ramp. Uh, we're going to, again, crank our detail up to 16. I'm going to take that black and move it clear up there. Then we're going to add another black because we're going to try to do this with a B spline. No, let's go back to constant. We don't need that. Okay not constant, linear. There we go. And we're going to change that to a deep red. We're going to move that over. We're actually going to put another and we're going to make that a lighter red. So it's a yellow. We're going to move all these over. I'll get rid of that one. I really want some of that yellow to come through there. And you can see it comes through in some places, not so much in others. I'm going to maybe pop that scale down. So then we're going to mix these. So color, mix RGB, and we're just going to do a, just a standard mix. But what we're going to do is we're going to scale that back somewhat. And now, as you can see, we've got that kind of background. Now all you have to do is just add some uh, camera motion to it uh, as you see fit. You can change the background colors. You can change, you can change anything in this. Uh, I am going to make this uh, the file for this available to my patrons. Um, so you can download the file. I can't include the image files because they're not mine, but I will in the, um, in the zip file that you download, I will include a link to where you can find or links to where you can find these image maps to use. Uh, again, if you've already got image maps, use them, but you can find my Patreon page at, um, patreon.com com slash planet of mystery that's planet underscore of underscore mystery and at any level you'll be able to download these files and experiment with them yourself you know i'm still not like overly you know overly delighted with uh the color of the uh planet there so let's go into object again i can play you know i can play with this i can tweak this i can do all kinds of things with it Let's see, take that color ramp out a little bit. Oh, there we go. 
Oh, there was one other thing that I wanted to do before I finished, and that is uh, to add what's called uh, Bloom. This is available only in uh, Eevee. So let's see if we can find us a nice spot with an impact. Maybe, okay, right there, there's a good one. We're gonna get that impact on the limb. Watch what happens when you click on Bloom. So it lights up a little bit. We're going to bring that intensity all the way up. Make the radius larger? Nope. Take the threshold down a bit. We don't want everything to bloom, just really bright stuff. Maybe we need to, on that emission, we need to multiply all of it. Let's see, converter, math, uh, multiply, three. I actually like that a lot better. And that bloom, you can see there, that bloom is bringing out sort of a glow around that crater or that, about that impact site. So there you go. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. You can also click on that bell to get notifications when I produce uh, new videos. Um, I do Blender Dome. I do Coffee and Astronomy. I do the Budget Conscious Astronomer. And every once in a while, I'll do Cool Astronomy Person. So until next time, this is Jim Craig with Planet of Mystery. Thanking you for coming into the Blender Dome. And we'll see you next time.